show is brought to you by Health Diagnostic Laboratory, Inc. Welcome back to the broadcast. Tuesdays are always educational because the folks from Health Diagnostic Laboratories stop by to talk about our health and answer some questions. Dr. Tara Dahl is back with us now. And we were talking about cholesterol, and it's just, you know, it's one of those things. It's a word, you throw it out there, and people think they know enough about it now. HDL, LDL, one's good, one's bad. Uh, you don't want one to be too high. Mm -hmm. But there's so much more to it than that. Right. And we're actually finding that you can have high cholesterol and in some cases never have heart disease or mm -hmm. not be at risk for heart disease. Is that because people have like Teflon veins, like it, nothing sticks? Well, not necessarily. It's that we're focusing so much on cholesterol, but cholesterol is probably not what matters as much as the particles that carry the cholesterol. And that's what our, our testing does is, is it measures a more accurate measure of who ends up having the, the bad particles that get into the arteries. Because people, some people have high cholesterol and never end up with heart disease. And some of those people get told you have to be on statins, you know, I don't care if no one in your family has a has a history of heart disease because your LDL cholesterol is high we need to treat you but you know in my opinion as a lipidologist I've been treating people for 15 years there's people with high cholesterol I know will not have heart disease based on all the advanced testing I do and I don't commit them to drugs for the rest of their life on the other hand there's other people with normal amounts of cholesterol that are very high risk and we find that out in our advanced testing and this is because you test for the particles that carry the cholesterol the particles what are those that carry the cholesterol again? those are the LDL particles which is the NMR technology or you can do an ApoB those are the two different ways to measure but that is a much more accurate measure of what's going on and in special populations, like you think about women who are young, um, children, you know, I don't want to be putting every young woman with a high cholesterol on cholesterol medication, or right. certainly children on cholesterol medication, unless they have a specific genetic disorder that we know is associated with early heart disease. But even in those people where we guess that's what they have, there's, there's certainly some people that actually have lower risk when we do advanced testing. And so we really want to be able to identify who we really need to treat and who we don't, because we don't want to give people drugs, you know, unless right. they really need to be on something. It seems like the advanced testing is like, you know, if you're uh, if you're an investigator, it's like yeah. it's like you know a crucial tool in your investigation oh, yeah. to figure out what somebody's the, the real state of their health is. Why aren't we doing more of this? Why don't doctors I prescribe don't more advanced testing? Well, I think it's a learning curve. I think in some respects, we, if we weren't taught in medical school, it's something you have to sort of unlearn what you learned and and start all over. And I think for some, that's just a hard hurdle. Um, I think, in all honesty, it's tough for docs. In this day and age, you know, you have to see 20, 30 patients a day. Mm -hmm. um, most doctors are owned versus, you know, independent, and there's a lot of pressure. And so taking on something new, that's sort of a new area of expertise, mm -hmm. I think is can be stressful. They think it's going to take a long time to try to interpret this, and I don't have the time. I mean, I, I've been honestly doing advanced testing for 15 years, and I can do it quick. I mean, I can look at a panel in 60 seconds, really know what it means and be able to quickly explain it to a patient. Um, but it takes some time to mm -hmm. sort of get to that point. So I think docs are just, you know, they're trying to do what they can just to get through the day. And, right. But there needs to be more education. I mean, this is critical. I think this will absolutely change the epidemic of heart disease and diabetes. We can stop these diseases if we tackle them 10 to 15 years before they're ever there. That's huge. Which we can do. What you're saying is With advanced huge. testing. I mean, yeah. we really can. We can beat these diseases. There's no reason. This now, has to be the number one cause of death. Let's talk about cholesterol with the advanced testing. When you test somebody, how much of their situation can be reversed? When, when you're testing for the particles that carry the bad right. cholesterol, how much of their situation can be reversed by diet? Well, it depends on what's driving it. So for some people, uh, it's it's a dietary problem. They're eating too much sugar. I tell you, sugar's mm -hmm. the problem. Mm -hmm. If we get rid of sugar, our particles go down. I mean, it's more so than fat. Fat is really not the issue at all. What's but we think of cholesterol as being fat, so we think we need to limit our fat. But actually, if we get rid of sugar, it can make a big difference. What is a better option than sugar for people? Uh, I mean, obviously, the artificial sugars aren't something that it's you better recommend. to just try to not want to, you know, natural sugars like fruits, mm -hmm. you know, the nice thing about eating a piece of fruit is that you're getting fiber, you're not just getting sugar, so that, you know, if we can just begin to have a little bit more of a palate for less is sweet. Is dextrose, so anything that ends in OSE is, is likely sugar, right? Especially fructose and okay. high fructose corn syrup, I mean, avoid it at all costs. Is dextrose, uh, that's a sugar? Right, that's a okay, sugar too. Okay. So, now the other thing you asked about uh, how we, you know, whether or not your particles can be lowered with diet. So in some cases, and in a lot of society, the way we eat can impact, you know, make, making changes will make a difference. Mm -hmm. There are some people who have a specific genetic disorder. It's called familial hypercholesterolemia. 
Now in that situation, what people have is um, this defective receptor at the liver. So if these particles are floating around in our bloodstream, kind of doing what they need to do, we need cholesterol for cell membranes, for mm -hmm. hormones, we need triglycerides for energy. And when those particles are done doing what they need to do in the bloodstream, they come back to the liver. And the liver, it's like a baseball glove sitting there, it catches the particles and recycles them. There's some people who were born with a defective receptor, it's like crooked, mm -hmm. and it can't clear the particles. Now that's the one scenario where no matter what you do with diet, I mean, you can run marathons, you can eat twigs, and your cholesterol will be high, your particles will be high, right. and people have premature heart disease. That is the one scenario where we really do need to use medication. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of docs will use statins for this, but um, in women of childbearing age, we can't always do that. So then we'll use things yeah. like niacin, um, which is a B vitamin that can be very effective at lowering but the again, particles. You don't know about that unless you do some of the advanced exactly. testing that you folks do. Exactly. Okay, well you can get more information about the Health Diagnostic, Diagnostic Laboratory by going to their website hdlabinc.com. You can also call them at the numbers on your screen and remember to talk to your own doctor to request any of the HDL tests. The HDL folks will be here every Tuesday to talk about your health and we are back with more broadcast in just a moment.